The Tigers currently sit in second place in the ACC standings and have won 12 straight games here at home. The Pitt Panthers play their third consecutive game on the road and are looking for their first ACC win of the season. It's Clemson versus Pitt, and it starts right now. Tigers, but it's important for a reason that I'm not sure a lot of people realize. No, and you know, one to get that double buy in the ACC tournament, they want to stay in the top four, stay in the top 25, ranked for the first time in a long time, and uh, then you got Pitt just looking for a, a mental health victory right now. But also the fact that they get another game playing without Dante Grantham. Can they start gelling as a team without Grantham? Now, one guy who has clicked since Grantham has gone out is another senior and Gabe Devoe. No, he has been absolutely terrific, and uh, you, you look at the numbers and what he's done. You know, he's got the ability. This guy came off the bench last year, and now he's playing starter minutes, getting inside. He can score at the rim. For the last three games, just 15 of 23 from behind the arc. Just outstanding production from him. He is the reigning ACC Player of the Week for the Pitt Panthers. There haven't been a whole lot of bright spots this year for Pitt. However, Marcus Carr is stepping up his game. No, and, you know, they're, they're playing seven freshmen. Guys are getting valuable experience on the floor. But Carr is, is very strong, and you look at the numbers in the last three. He's been very steady, 17 points, shooting over 50%, eight assists a game. Uh, they're going to need a collective effort from a lot of people to get a win tonight. They're looking for a win win on the road. It would be their first. They're looking for a win against a top 25 team. But this Clemson team, they have won 12 straight here at home. We will have lineups in tip coming up after this. ACC College Basketball is brought to you by Spirit Communications. Our fiber, our network, your business. The home of the Clemson Tigers here in Clemson, South Carolina. The 16th ranked Clemson Tigers, that is. That's right, the highest ranking since February of 2009. The lineup for the Pitt Panthers, a young squad. They're starting four freshmen. The only non-freshman starter is Jared Wilson Frame. And for the Clemson Tigers, we talked about Gabe DeVoe. How about the play of Marquise Reed coming off 22 points and seven rebounds in the victory at Wake Forest on Saturday. He leads the team in scoring at just under 16 points per game. The officials are Mike Eads, Lamar Sampson, and Terry Weimer. Pitt in black, Clemson in white. It's going to be interesting, Justin. Something's going to have to give in this game. Pitt second in the conference in defending the three, and that's really what sustained the Tigers uh, in this, you know, this stretch. So, uh, you know, we'll see if uh, what wins, pitching or hitting. <laughs> The tip is controlled by the Panthers. Here is Jared Wilson frame. And this is a pit team. It, it's, they've been competitive in the first 20 minutes of games. It's just been uh, finishing that's uh, been a problem. Marcus Carr off the glass. No good. The rebound pulled down by Elijah Thomas. I think the key thing, you know, Thomas has been a great rim protector for them, but uh, he's got to stay out of foul trouble in this game. Thomas, good position underneath. Able to go up against Terrell Brown to put it in for the first bucket of the game. You know, and Brown has been terrific inside, too, but I think he has to be a little careful early for the same reason. They don't want him to get in foul trouble. He really gave a lot of ground on that post-up. Cameron Davis looking for Brown. 
Brown, the jumper is good. Terrell Brown, the freshman of Providence, Rhode Island, coming off a career-high 14 points in the loss at UNC on Saturday. A deep three by DeVoe. This off the back of the rim. He's been so good from three-point land. Nearly a travel by Wilson Frame, but was able to dribble as he went to the ground. Yeah, 15, how, about, how about 15 of 23 in the last five, three games for Gabe DeVoe? That's pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, he, he'll take that percentage. <laughs> the three from Wilson Frame off the mark, and the rebound is chased down by DeVoe. Once again, it's Thomas coming up short this time in the rebound for Brown. That's, that was a tough shot. That was about a 12 or 13 foot jump hook. And you're not going to put any pressure on Brown to try to defend and pick up a foul like that. Wilson frame against David Scarra. Shot clock at 10. Carr looking for the screen. Shot clock at 4. A three for Brown. He knocks it down. Terrell Brown, that's his first three of the season. He was 0 for 7 prior to that. And then, you know, really, Clemson never even played him. They tried to run a little late screen roll, and they left him wide open. He looked good shooting that yeah. three, too. I may have looked glanced over at Kevin Stall. He said, I need some free reign here. A nice cut to the hoop by Marquise Reed and a good find. And it's 5-4, Pittsburgh on top. And that's the thing, Justin, about this perimeter for Clemson. Not only knocking down threes, but they are very good at getting to the rim as well. And they think that may be an advantage against Pitt. Again, the screen set by Brown. Carr finds Brown cutting, lost it. A turnover. Here comes Shelton Mitchell. Mitchell, a hesitation, blow by, and he gets fouled by Marcus Carr. Kevin Stallings in his second year as the head coach for the Pitt Panthers. 24 and 33, talking to him earlier today. He said, I know we're going to win a game in conference play. I can't tell you when it's going to happen, but we're going to win. And here's the crazy thing. Pitt has beaten a top 20 team in 17 straight years. Well, you got you know a program that was built by Ben Howland, and then Jamie Dixon took over. A lot of success during that stretch, mm -hmm. and uh, expectations are high in, in Pittsburgh about this program. And uh, so this is a huge departure from what they're used to, but you know, you, seven freshmen, you know, ten new faces, all the different starting lineups, tough to get some continuity. But and that win is going to happen, Justin, when they get Wilson Crane, Stewart, Carr, Davis, all playing well in the same game. They've had stretches where they've really been terrific, but it's been individually. That's been the key. They have not been able to get all those guys playing well in the same game. 5-5 five, five ball game here. Carr, and that'll be a turnover. Brad Brownell, now in his eighth year. As the head coach at Clemson, how about this? First time he's ever coached a ranked team. Yeah, no, I mean, he had great years at UNC Wilmington and Wright State, but, you know, those teams were never ranked. And, uh, you know, he went to the NCAA tournament his first year here, but that team wasn't ranked. So new territory for the coach and new territory for the players as well. Thomas with the field goal, his yeah. second field goal. They, they need they need some more scoring out of him. You know, they he's a, he's really defined at the other end, but they should you know they need to get some more points. Clemson trying to push the ball up into the corner and stepping on the sideline is Clyde Trapp, a freshman of East Over, South Carolina, first turnover for Clemson. Obviously, Clemson without Dante Grantham. And Brad Brownell, he, he was very honest with us. He said, honestly, with with Grantham in the lineup, I thought we were a really, really good team. Now without him, we don't have the same margin for error. No, he was talking about, you know, elite eight type of run in the NCAA tournament. He thought that was how much of a difference that Grantham made. Rebound here for Mitchell. Thomas, nice catch for the dunk. Well, we talked about scoring, and uh, the, you know they they really.
really seem intent on getting him early touches. And if that continues, Justin, that's just going to open up things for the perimeter shooters because they're going to have to come down and double him. Six of the nine points for Clemson, courtesy of Thomas. It's a 6 0 run for Clemson here. Carr, shot clock at 10. Underneath, good luck. Unable to finish, though, is Chukwuka. He was just checked in. A sophomore out of Sweden. Yeah, you, you catch the ball that deep, you, especially on the road with this team. You've got to finish those easy points. A three for Clyde Schrapp. And it might be a time for a timeout for Kevin Stallings. He might not be able to wait for the under-16. Clemson five for seven from the floor to start out. Pitt two for seven. Carr back rims it. And the rebound for Trapp. Mitchell to the hoop, comes up short. Chukruka with a rebound. Can Pitt get a point or at least draw a foul here on this possession? A three from the corner is good by Jared Wilson Frame, and that was much needed for the Panthers. No, no question about it. That scoring drought, and uh, you know, he's he's pro arguably been their most consistent player over the course of the ACC season. So a good rush up the floor and a good find in the corner. Those are the first points in over three minutes for Pittsburgh. Thomas finding Scara, and Scara gets fouled. A late whistle against Jared Wilson Frame. Well, we talked about uh, getting the big started early, and Elijah Thomas has delivered uh, the early post up inside. Scoring Will, he's got six points, climbs it up by four. And you look at uh, you look at Pitt, and we talked about it. The, you know, defending the three is going to be a, a huge part of what they do. And uh, for Clemson, they, they're looking for their early knockout punch. They want to. You get a team that's fragile like this, emotionally hasn't won. You don't want to give them any hope. Looked like it was heading in that direction, but then Wilson Frame hit a big shot, kind of got them back in the game a little bit. At the free throw line is David Scara. The transfer out of Valparaiso knocks down the free throw. And arguably one of their best defenders out there. Another guy they, you know, when you talk about Grantham, all the things he did, it's not going to be one person that's going to pick up the scoring. So, you know, they've gotten some early success with Thomas, and Scar is probably another guy that they'd like to see score a little bit more. Scar goes to the bench. Amir Sims comes in for him. Six point lead for the Tigers. Six minutes into the ballgame. Shamil Stevenson, number 23, has checked in for the first time for the Panthers. Carr. And a turnover. Jared Wilson Frame throws it away. You know, and Brad Brown, I'll talk about the things that Thomas has done much better this year. Small things, and right there, hedging on that pick and roll action. Really, Pitt hasn't gotten a whole lot out of that. He's done a very good job. Gabe DeVoe has attempted one shot so far, was long on a three-point attempt. In the corner, good pump fake, this for three, no good for Reed, and a foul on the floor, and this foul is going to go against... I think it's against Chukwuka. Yep, Kenneth Chukwuka. So how about the Clemson Tigers and their tournament resume? Very solid, Justin, I tell you. I mean, RPI of four, strength of schedule right there. The five wins against the top 50. That's a high seed uh, if you were to take the name off the top. And uh, you can see why they're ranked and have been ranked for the last six weeks. Mm -hmm. Six straight weeks in the top 25. A win tonight would give them 20 wins on the season. You know, it's funny, Brad, Brad Barnell told us that we really hadn't talked about it. The team hasn't talked about being ranked. You know, they, they, with, in today's day and age, with the, all the noise that's out there, you know, you know they're hearing it a lot around campus. But they just go about their business. Reed underneath. Good footwork by Amir Sims. Well, he's, he's one of the freshmen that... You know, this, this group has a nice mix, a nice chemistry, a good group of leaders at the top, and the freshmen have really bought in, to, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Stevenson, kick out. 
Wilson framed for three, not this time, and the rebound for Marquise Reed. A chance to make it a 10 point lead. DeVoe, his pull up jumper, short, and the rebound for Jared Wilson Frame. And the frame got away with the one that time. We'll try it for the steal, but uh, DeVoe forced good help inside, forced him to pull up for that jump shot. Marcus Carr has been quiet so far. Now has the switch against Thomas. Shot clock to seven. Wilson Frame kicks it out. Stevenson. Shot clock at three. Carr for three. Gets it partially deflected. A block. We'll see Justin, even on that switch, Carr was not able to take advantage of it because of the help. Reed splits the double. That has it poked away. Here comes Carr. Carr, nice step around, and he puts it up and in. Yeah, this, uh, this is a much improved defensive team for Clemson, but if you're pit and you have the opportunity to run and not have to play against them in the half court, you should do it at every opportunity. Marcus Carnell, one of five from the floor. And a foul will be called here against Parker Stewart. A six-point lead for the Tigers here at home over Pitt. ACC College Basketball is brought to you by Husqvarna Automower. All-star lawns start with Automower. Seeing is believing at Automower.us. By Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, let's go places. By Works. And by North Myrtle Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau. Just coast into unexpected adventures. Find special travel deals at ExploreNorthMyrtleBeach.com. Well, I, I can tell you plenty about North Myrtle Beach now. Yeah? Yeah, I should have done that, Reed. <laughs> <laughs> we could have done an infomercial on that. It's a six-point lead right now. I thought that was an infomercial. <laughs> Brad Brownell's team leading right now by six. Gabe DeVoe on the bench right next to his head coach. It will be Clemson ball to inbound. In for the first time is Mark Donnell. Number five for the Tigers. Also Scott Spencer, number 22, in for the first time. Green kick out. Shelton Mitchell's three is good. So out of the timeout, they run that play and they get three. Second three of the game for the Tigers. It'll be interesting to see the balance of the offense and how it goes. And, you know, now with uh, Thomas out of the game, uh, you know, not so much a post player in there. A sloppy pass inside by Brown, a turnover. Reed able to steal it. Now Donnell, he can shoot the three. Passes that one up and they'll reset. There's really no post presence at all in there. Donnell is, a, you know, more of a high post and he'll set the high pick, or pick and roll. Another screen comes. Reed splits it. Shot was altered. Good job coming out and helping by Brown. Yeah, no, he was, he, you know, great. I, I think he's got a pretty good upside. You look at some of the, you know, the freshmen on this team. A little long on that shot. And the rebound by Amir Sims. Well, most of the shots he took, he made that early three, in, uh, but he's been content to pull out to 15 feet and shoot the sh jump shot. And right now, with the size advantage he has, he can go down low. Nope. Come here, come here. Shot clock down to eight. Good. The three short. Well, well who's got Spencer? Whoever Donnell is, is guarding, and when he sets the pick and roll, they're not even worrying about him. They're just jumping the shooter, trying to put some pressure on him, whoever it is. Parker Stewart with the left, too strong. Dinell with a rebound, a chance here for Clemson to run. Mitchell. That's the same, same thing with Sims, too. Anytime they start a pick and roll. Donnell has it poked away. Shot clock down to seven. Mitchell now for three. That's long. Never drew iron. Shot clock should not have reset on that. This has been a different team since uh, Gabe DeVoe left the ball game. It's tougher Clemson to run offense. And an offensive foul called against Shamil Stevenson. Well, that'll bring us to tonight's Toyota Let's Go Places. 
the teams in the ACC looking to put on their dancing shoes. Yeah, Virginia Tech fragile with that strength of schedule. North Carolina in good shape, but they've their conference record shaking. Of course, they got a some game going on tonight. And, they do? Uh, it's, yeah, I, I think huh. this blue-white scrimmage, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Different shades of blue. <laughs> But uh, NC State, another one kind of right there, had some really tough non-conference losses, but have done well and have to continue to do well just in conference. Look who's back in. Thomas is back in, but he gets a shot blocked by Terrell Brown. Well, Brown can be, now he can be a little bit more aggressive at the eight-minute mark of the first half. He was a little uh, tentative early on, but he can be more physical now. They get in the ball. Going at Thomas, off the glass, nice move. So I think both, both centers are going to have a lot of time to shoot because they're, they're not going to double. They're not going to leave the guys on the perimeter. And it's funny, it almost looks like Terrell Brown is more comfortable when he's going up against Elijah Thomas and Thomas is guarding him. Well, that, the reason they're going at him, they want to get Thomas in foul trouble and, you know, get him out of the long game. Warren taking it to the hoop. He's got four, 21 to 12, Clemson leading here at the eight-minute mark. Cameron Davis. down on Carr, staying with him, trying to get the ball out of his hands. Another three-point attempt, this time a miss by Brown, the rebound by DeVoe, who's checked back in. I think he's probably shot his last three for the game. <laughs> you know, that first one was, was gotten a little hall pass. Here comes Carr. Carr, kick out into the corner, and Jared Wilson frame steps on the sideline for a turnover. Well, here we go, we got Darrell Brown uh, doing it on both ends of the floor, a terrific block from behind. And then he gets the ball, squares up, goes up, and finishes strongly. Climbs it up by nine. The sidekick goes from tabletop to workshop in an instant. Portable and handy when you need quick support like a picnic or tailgating. It's sturdy enough for heavy lifting in your workshop. Our TV crew used it and set up for the game tonight. That's also my dining room table. And that could be purchased for the low, low price of $49.99. Insert my home address underneath that. 21 to 12. Clemson leading Pittsburgh. Justin Kutcher alongside Mike Jaminski here from Little John Coliseum. Pitt comes out showing some pressure. No, uh, that was close to a 10 second call. They lost track of uh, time a little bit. And what that little press did, it shortened the uh, possession for Clemson. Clyde Trapp has checked back in. Shelton Mitchell for three. No. And the rebound pulled down by Thomas. Cutting to the hoop is Scarra. And Scarra's got six already. He averages just 2.1 per game. Yeah, both, both he and Thomas really um, very offensive minded. But that was a, a killer possession. Very good initial defense on that three, forcing the long three. But then you've got to clean it up with the defensive glass. <laughs> Here's that last play, and this, you know, Thomas comes up with the second chance. Everybody's scattered, and Scar the nice dive down the lane. An 11-4 Clemson run. As they lead now by 11, the largest lead of the game for the Tigers. Shot clock down to eight. And a foul away from the ball, and this foul is going to go against Elijah Thomas. A top nine in the ACC standings. And there's a, there's a lot to sort out. And the key thing about the nine is, Justin, the, the bottom of six will play on Tuesday in the ACC tournament. Nobody's ever come out of Tuesday and won the championship. That's five, that'd be a five game run. Duke was the first to do last year a four game, couldn't come out of Wednesday. That was just the first team foul against Clemson. Pitt's got five team fouls. And we're going to have a traveling violation here. And this will be the seventh turnover of the game already for Pitt. They have more turnovers than they do field goals. Seven to five. That's not a good recipe for success. And only, uh, only three assists in the game so far. Now that's part of that is because of poor shooting. 
Well, they're also, they don't have an offensive rebound in this game. So you put all that together, uh, probably pretty fortunate. It's only an 11 point lead at this point. Mark Donnell is back in. Thomas is on the bench for Clemson. And this is a turnover for the Tigers. Here comes Marcus Carr with turnover for Clemson. Parker Stewart's three is good. Parker Stewart, just seven for 28 from three point in his last four games. So they'd love to see him get going. And he's been uh, he's been under double figures three of the last four, and they, they just can't afford a you know that lack of production from him. Dave DeVoe misses the three, but Scara gets fouled on the putback attempt. There's Parker Stewart. He's been shooting 49% from three in ACC competition. Nice shot with a hand up in his face. Cameron Davis just got called for the foul against Scara. Six-team foul as Scara misses the free throw. And Scarlett only 54% from the line, so a little bit of a, a liability there. But because, you know, different guys, uh, because of the Grantham injury, have had their minutes expand, Scarlett, one of them, he's uh, averaged about 14 minutes a game over the last two. Amazing. I, you know, personally, I thought that they were going to not totally collapse, but really take a big hit. I'm talking about Clemson when Grantham went out. You're, not, you're the alone. I think that was the consensus. Yep. Brown, shot clock down to nine. Little jump hook puts it in. That's what you want out of him. Yeah, and, you know, again, the no-double team, he had multiple dribbles in the paint. He really wants to turn over that left shoulder. Trap leaves it back for DeVoe. DeVoe, good pump fake. One dribble, three, got it. First basket of the game. So, uh, you know, for Clemson to have this lead, and DeVoe hit his first bucket with 4.49 to go. And did you see him as he ran by us? He goes, finally! <laughs> Into the corner. Stewart, his pump fake in one dribble, comes up short. And now he gets called for the foul. That'll be the 17th foul against Pitt. In one and one coming up for DeVoe. Here's that look and see. No, no, kind of a half fake double team, but uh, he is very good turning over that left shoulder with a little hook. And, and uh, I love that little the pump fake and then the side dribble to keep yourself behind the three point line. <laughs> That was the second team foul against Parker Stewart. 17 foul. So DeVoe goes to the free throw line for one on one, where he is a 77% free throw shooter. And this is this is also an area where Clemson is really and you know hurt. They are missing the front of the one one. But as a team, shooting so much better from the free throw line than they have historically over the last 10 or 15 years. A 10-point lead for the Tigers, coming up on four minutes to go here in the opening half. A block by Donnell, getting it back though is Brown, and this time on Duncan. He's got 11 of the 19 points here for Pittsburgh. And now they're going back to the, you know, they've, they've, they've got sat in the zone, and they Clemson really hasn't hurt them from three in this game. Three of nine so far, Justin, and then that little trap to eat some time off the clock. Shot clock down to 10. Mitchell to trap. 4-3. Way off the mark, and the rebound falls into Brown's hands. A chance to cut into the lead here for Pitt. Carr. Strong take to the hoop. And it's going to be an offensive foul against Cameron Davis. Davis can't believe it. He thought Mitchell was in the restricted area. Selfie, why not? You're here at Little John Coliseum. That's the score right now with 327 to go. But how about what happened last night in college basketball? Number one, Villanova lost at home to St. John's, who, oh, by the way, beat Duke on Saturday. Number two, Virginia beat Florida State. And number three, Purdue lost to number 14, Ohio State. So what does that mean if Virginia 
They play to take care of business against Virginia Tech. Yep. It would be the first time since the Ralph Sampson era wow. that they were ranked number one in the country. Um, so, you know, Tony Bennett's really done an amazing job with that team. Uh, they're or, or all but have clinched first place in the regular season. The win, one of the most impressive win was the one against the, at, at Cameron against Duke. DeVoe for his second three, knocks it down. He's got three straight games of five three-pointers. He's got six points now on two threes. And, and he's the last guy you want to get going. He's been kind of quiet. You, you mentioned the fact you saw him say finally. But uh, if he makes a little bit of a run here at the end of the half, it'll carry over to the second half. And that's been a problem for Pitt. They've been in games, even in the game against North Carolina. And all of a sudden, three minutes to go in the first half. Carolina went on a run, and that was it. That game ended 96-65. Marcus Carr, who has been so good recently. Again, this illustrates what they, their, their season, you know, he's one of six now in this game. Scar trying to keep it alive. Here comes Carr. And that was knocked away by his own teammate, Terrell Brown. The turnover in transition. It's Reed with a finish. Uh, and Carr is looking around like he's like, how did that happen? You know, and... Uh, those are the, again the, the, the just the mental errors and the things you're going to have to live with with freshmen playing out on the floor. Under two minutes to play. Stewart. A couple of pump fakes comes up short and the rebound to Elijah Thomas. Pull up for Mitchell. That's long. Brown, yeah, able to grab the ball. I didn't think it was a great decision. They, they, they didn't have numbers, and uh, you know, should have just pulled it out and waited for some friends to come. Brown comes to set the screen. Shot clock down to five. Carr, a lot of dribbling. Kick out to the corner. The three is well long. They say it hit the rim, and now we're going to see Mike Eads. He's going to go to the monitor to see if this actually hit the rim, because if it didn't hit the rim, it'll be a shot clock violation. Right. It, it, looked, it looked like it grazed it a little bit, but this is going to be a close call. But this is you know, the, the problem, you know, it's, this is, a, this is a technicality, and uh, let's see, see here. Yeah, oh, yeah it hit the rim. It definitely yep. it hit the rim, so that's uh, it's going to remain Pitt's ball. I, I would think that would be the ruling. You could see the trajectory change a little bit. The problem is it took him too long to get into the play, and it was a tough shot. And that was a nice job by uh, Brown pushing in. Mike Eats, he saw it and said, graze the rim. Goes over and tells Kevin Stallings it will stay pit ball with 108 to go, 28 seconds on the shot clock. And really, I mean, if you're pit right now, you, you just got a timeout, right? You got a free timeout. So this is one of those opportunities where you're saying, all right, let's, we got to get a bucket. Yeah, I mean, you know, just like, again, for, for mental health and, you know, and get a, how about this? Get a bucket, get a stop. Get another bucket, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, the little momentum going into halftime, feeling a little better about yourself. You get a chance to design a play that you wouldn't have been able to do beforehand. Jared Wilson frame is able to check in, and there is the bucket by Terrell Brown going off the glass. He's got 13 now. Where would this team be without him tonight? I mean, it's just, you know, you're doing unexpected offense. Remember, he had a career-high 14 against North Carolina. He's got 13 here in the first half. Comes in averaging 3.7. Shot clock down to eight. Can they get that stop now? Here's Mitchell. Shot clock at five. And it's going to be an offensive foul against Elijah Thomas. And that's his second. So there is the stop. And now you've got 39 seconds to go. And there you have Brad Brownell has to get him out. And again, this is, you know, for that, you don't want him getting an offensive foul 35 feet from the basket on a moving screen. With five seconds to go on the shot clock. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, just a, just a clock and time awareness. 
And now the timeout is called after they move the ball beyond midcourt here by Pitt with 38.9 seconds to go. Again, this is Kevin Stallings realizing exactly what you said. They were able to get that free timeout to run the play before to get Terrell Brown that open look. He went glass. They got it. Now they get the stop. It's an offensive foul. You have a chance here to get a bucket, and you can get some momentum, which they have very rarely had going into the locker room for halftime. Yeah, they get, under, get it under double figures, and, uh, you know, there's still going to be some time left for Clemson to make a rush up the floor about just a little under nine seconds. But, you know, I would like to see maybe a, like a high pick and roll with, uh, you know, involving Brown because he's been so good. And uh, he's, he's had a lot of time to operate. Got off to a quick start, knocked down that early jump shot. And uh, he, he has solely been Pitt's offense and then also doing a nice job on the glass and defensively as well. 13 points, 6 rebounds here in the first half for Brown. The rest of the team, 3 of 16 for 8 points. Curious to see the second half and they make an adjustment on meeting Clemson and start to come down and double-team him a little bit, make Pitt prove themselves from the outside. There's the high screen. Carr falling away. He gets fouled. He'll go to the free-throw line. Falling to the floor is Shelton Mitchell. He gets up gingerly. That's just the third foul against Clemson. The first on anybody else not named Elijah Thomas. And, uh, nobody even... Clemson's left a few points at the free throw line, 4-7, but these are the first attempts of the game for Pitt. And Carr, an 84.5% free throw shooter, misses the first. Peace, Ellie Gomont comes in, replacing Terrell Brown so that Brown doesn't pick up a foul here on the defensive end. And Monty Boykins comes in, replacing Parker Stewart, because Stewart, he does have two fouls. Carr, one of two at the line, now three points on the night. Actually, uh, Gabe DeVoe coming back down and uh, his, his, his holding his left arm. And a timeout taken here by Clemson. Yeah, Gabe DeVoe is, looks like he's holding that left hand. Yeah. So a 10-point lead here for Clemson. About, well, I can tell you exactly. 1.7 second different shot clock to game clock. How about that, Matt? I mean, I, I know you went to Duke, but that was impressive. Solid. It was solid. <laughs> and it won't yeah, he... yeah, you can see uh, DeVoe just, uh, it just looked like he ran into his own guy. But uh, back to your math. Uh, uh, I won't tell anybody that you have your calculator app open on your phone. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> Pardon my friend. He's a little slow. The town's back that way. <laughs> DeVoe will inbound, still holding that hand right in front of us. He's Ellie Goma with a 7-4 wingspan. It's trying to make it difficult to get the ball in. That's, a, that's another rule I think you need to change. If you get the ball over half court, you've got to get it in over half court. You can't mm. throw it back. That would be a big change. And now here's Clemson just waiting to go with probably under 10 on the shot clock. Shelton Mitchell. Here's DeVoe. Shot clock down to 5. Mitchell with three. DeVoe, four, three. Long. And this shot will not count. It's short anyway by Reed. So a 10-point lead for Clemson going into the locker room. They have won 12 in a row here at home. 16 points in the paint for the 16th-ranked Clemson Tigers. We will be back after this for the halftime report from Will John Coliseum. A 10-point lead for the Tigers over the Pittsburgh Panthers.
start the second half, 10-point lead for Clemson. Justin cuts alongside Mike Jaminski. G-Man, what do you see in the second half if takes it to get back into it? Well, I think they stay with the zone. It's been a very effective. Clemson only 3 of 14 from 3, so they've got to shoot out or get easy transition baskets, which they haven't gotten. And uh, frankly, uh, you know, right now, Terrell Brown, he needs some help. 13.6 of 9 shooting. The rest of the team, 3 of 16 from the floor. Now that's math, my friend. <laughs> you had enough time to figure that out. Clemson to start with the ball here in the second half. Here's DeVoe, matched up against Parker Stewart. Shelton Mitchell. Already changed two. They've started now fronting the post inside. DeVoe to the hoop, gets the roll. Dave DeVoe hit a couple of threes in the first half. That's his first two-point field goal. It's a 12-point lead here for Clemson. We talked about this in the first half, about how Pitt has not had all their guys clicking in one game. Yep. They only have one clicking right now. No, and, uh, you know, somebody needs, uh, the basket needs to open up. Nice back, back cut that time by Cameron Davis. That's one of the best plays they've run yet. Marcus Carr finding Cameron Davis. Thomas trying to go over well, I don't Terrell know, Brown, and that's tough. Don't know why he went back to his left hand that time. I mean, he had him buried inside. Cameron Davis in the paint, trying to leave it off for Brown to the reverse. He has that shot altered this time by Thomas. So the big men have altered shots against each other. One thing we should say, we didn't touch on the first half, uh, that uh, Reed has the flu. He's in bed yesterday, so maybe a reason why he hasn't been that effective this evening. Only four points for him. Well, Gabe DeVoe just knocked down his third three of the game. Trying to make it four straight games with at least five three-pointers. He let everybody else get involved in that first half, and I think he's going to try to, I, you know, I think Clemson lost an opportunity to, wide, you know, to widen the lead out. That is the third foul against Elijah Thomas. Yeah, and here's the look we talked about, the bow, the ability, because he can knock down the three. And then, uh, you know, when they overplay outside, they, they had actually, they... Had him, Elijah Thomas, drawn out, and then the uh, DeVoe again is shaken off. He had that left hand injury, it looked like, in the first half, but not. But now those things never bother you on the offensive end of the floor. Elijah Thomas has to go to the bench with those three fouls. Good closeout by Scarra, but he gets called for the foul. It'll be a three shot foul for Parker Stewart. The first against Scarra, he said, Oh no, I got all ball, but Lamar Simpson said, Nope. There is some other part of the body involved. Uh, they will uh, they'll show it, but you can show it once on the replay. And you can hear the groans in the background. The crowd thought he got the block, but still, chances of chances of getting that block are slim, Justin. You just have to go out and, you know, he got the hand that looked on the follow-through that time. But you just you have to come out under control and just contest the shot, make it a tough shot. And it almost and, seems like today with all the advanced analytics. Guys aren't going to block the shots of shooters. They're just running past them. Past them and, and, and plus, it's a, you know, he, he gave him a break by missing the last one, but he's a 83% shooter from the free throw line. He was 24-25 from the free throw line in conference play. Shot clock down to six. Danell for three, knocks it down. That's what he does. Mark Danell is now 13 of 24 from three-point land on the season. Yeah, that uh, stretch four position has become big in college basketball, but uh, he really has not scored a whole lot. Of Ten points total his last six games. Wilson Frame, a little bit out of control, and he's going to be called for an offensive foul. Well, here's the look in the kick out, and you can see that Brown was really reluctant to come out of the lane and get a hand up. There you go. I don't go back to that. To, you know, give uh, Steve Danell get, drive the lane, draw the uh, shot blocker inside. 
That foul against Wilson Frame was his second. DeVoe for three again. He's starting to heat up. now for DeVoe, offensive foul for Terrell Brown. He was moving, trying to set the pick, and I always wonder, is that the fault of the guy setting the pick or the guard, but this is the three by DeVoe. Yeah, great screen, caught it in rhythm. He's had three straight games, Justin, of five made threes. He's already got four. Took him a little while, but as you say, getting heated up here in the second half. And you mentioned it, hand injury? What hand injury? Yeah. Doesn't hurt. 43 <laughs> 26, Clemson leading. DeVoe for his fifth three. Four straight with five threes for Gabe DeVoe. A chance to silence the crowd by Terrell Brown, who now has a new career high with 15 points. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty good defensive stand, but the, the breakdown off the dribble able to give Brown some space. Zone here for Pitt. Trap, kick back. Danell in the corner. In some trouble. Scarra. And he gets fouled here by Brown. Keep the great score down for very long, and Gabe DeVoe came out with a vengeance in the second half. And he, he just helped to build this lead to 46 28. ACC College Basketball is brought to you by Spirit Communications, our fiber, our network, your business. Here on the campus of Clemson University, Gabe DeVoe is the reigning ACC Player of the Week. And here in the second half, he is stepping up his game. That, that drive setting up the jump shot. His teammates really doing a nice job setting screens and getting him open. And, uh, and that one from the Tiger paw now. It's a, it's a big paw, but that was a deep shot. Four straight games. With five three-pointers, 11 points in the second half. He's five of eight from three-point land as Scarra knocks down the first free throw. He's now four of five from the line, eight points. And uh, they're, they're two threes away from having a fourth game of ten or more threes. Scarra knocks down both free throws. It's now a 20-point lead. It was a 10-point lead at the half. In the first four-plus minutes, they've added to that lead by ten. Neil Stevenson is in, trying to lob one down low off the fingertips of Terrell Brown. Will be Clemson ball. Well, the issue, I mean, the Pitt's only Pitt's only gotten taken three shots in this half so far. Fly trap gets it to Mitchell underneath. Danell tries to go the reverse, gets his own miss and puts it in. And so they're going to they're going to have to play man. That was beautiful passing inside, but the way that DeVoe is shooting the three, they can't use that zone that was so effective in the first 20 minutes. In the corner, Stevenson. With the left, no, off the glass. And the rebound to DeVoe. The Tigers starting to run away with it. This is definitely from the paw. Underneath, Sims, kick out, Mitchell for three, got it. Uh, just, uh, you know, they're playing beautifully right now, but just imagine if, if Grantham was healthy. I don't uh, think Pitt wants to imagine that. Yeah, no, the, the, you know, and Brad Brownell can't let that sink into his head, but uh, you know, it's back there somewhere. Mitchell for three again. And they're just playing horse out there right now. Clemson six for six for three here in the second half.
ACC College Basketball is brought to you by the official corporate champions of the ACC. Geico. New York Life. Bojangles. Food Lion. And Toyota. So, this half has belonged to Clemson. Outscoring Pitt 24 to 6. They have more three point field goals than Pitt has attempted field goals. It just, uh, it, it, we touched on it at the open. It's been the undoing of this team. They've been competitive for 20 minutes, and then uh, the second half, things just unravel. Shot clock down to seven here for Carr. Shot clock at three. Not going to get a shot off. And that's, we put out those offensive numbers, but this is the end of the floor that has made the difference this year in Clemson. They've improved so much defensively from last year. 13th turnover for Pitt. It was a 10-point game at the half on Saturday at Carolina for Pitt. They trailed by 10. They were outscored by 21 in the second half. It was a 10-point game here at the half tonight. And they've been outscored 24 to 6. A miss by DeVoe from deep. That was almost half court. Yeah. Shamil Stevenson. And he gets fouled. That foul will go against Amir Sims. Stevenson has some good games early. Nine times in double figures, but this, you know, ACC gets good. I mean, it catches up to all these guys. You know, all the freshmen. Got a little bit of an old man's game. Uh, plays low to the ground. He's a big kid for a freshman. 6'6", 230. Reminds me of pit players of, you know, 10 years ago. They used to have those guys who were a little undersized at their position, but extremely strong. When you run into them, you fall over. Mitchell underneath the hands of Donnell and it will be a turnover Pittsburgh ball rare one for uh, Clemson that only their sixth of the game has done such a nice job you know, with shooting the basketball but also taking care of it Stevenson to the reverse and he'll go to the free throw line the fouls against Amir Sims a look around the ACC. A game that you might have some interest in. The Blue Devils lead by two over North Carolina. Uh, Louisville up big, and they're, they're, they stumbled a little. Everybody's stumbling at some point, but they lost two home games in a row. Well, but I think, you know, Dave Padgett has done a terrific job uh, with, that, with all the things that were going around that program at the start of the season. And, and, and you know what? It's funny because you talk to people around Louisville, and they think they've underachieved. And I, I think they've overachieved. Yep. No, I, I agree. It's, uh, you know, this was a, it was a top 15, top 10 program, and, you know, it's the same army that's out there, just a different general. And But it's still, it's a, you know, it took a while for them to get on the same page. It wasn't like a minor distraction. Trap on the baseline comes up short. Stevenson, kick out, extra pass. Top of the key, Parker Stewart for three, hits it. And that's one of those things where you like to see from Pitt. Well, Stevenson has made a difference since he's coming to the game, Justin. He's been very aggressive off the dribble. Looking for his shot, but that time he drew a de the defense in and got a teammate an open look. Trap looking for DeVoe. 
jump stop kick out. Mitchell underneath, able to find the ball who puts it in. Inside or outside, but uh, you know Pitt has now made a concerted effort to try to deny him out on the three-point line, make him into a two-point shooter. He can beat you either way. A 25-point lead here for Clemson. Shot clock down to eight. Carr gets it back. Carr pulls up for three. That's well short. An air ball here. Sims picks up the loose ball. That's a few times now this half. Just a, an unawareness of the shot clock. Trap has it taken away by Parker Stewart. Up ahead. Here comes Davis. And Davis able to put it in. Two Clemson players got a hand on it. Off the backboard. Able to go. You know, big hole to climb out of. But you got to give Pitt credit. Uh, still playing extremely hard. Clemson takes a timeout. We'll take a timeout with them. 58-35. Clemson on top. Gabe DeVoe has caught fire on 90s night. Got to love some of the outfits. Had I known it was 90s night, I would have changed my suit. <laughs> only, only having to go halfway back into the closet. <laughs> I'm all about that. We brought the MC Hammer pants. You never know. Shot clock down to seven. DeVoe steps back. That's for three. And that's good. His six. You know you're hot when you take a step back, you look down yeah. to make sure you're behind the three-point line and still get the shot up. DeVoe now with 22 points on the night. Terrell Brown. And a foul here will send Cameron Davis to the free throw line. The foul is against Marquise Reed. A look at the Hardy's game summary. Field goals. Yeah, when you, I mean, when you're, when you're destroying somebody at the three-point line and winning points in the paints, and you can see the big... Uh, you know, disparity in assists. A lot of one-on-one -on -one play by the Pitt Panthers. Cameron Davis. I think they may have just opened every door in the building. Because that missed by about three feet. Uh, you're saying there was a strong downdraft? <laughs> That's like when you're playing golf and the first one goes way right and you have to hit a second one it's right down the middle and you go same guy. Yeah, that, well, that second golfer's pretty good. <laughs> DeVoe, step back jumper, comes up short. And it's out of bounds, will be off of David Scarra and it will be pit ball. Oh. 61-36, Clemson leading 9.38 to go here. Getting out there and you, you know with that third foul, if you're Brown, you get the ball, try to pick up that fourth and get him back out of the game. Stevenson for three, no. Thomas gets the rebound. Eight rebounds now for Elijah Thomas. Little hesitation, keeps the dribble going. Kick out, DeVoe open for three. You cannot leave him open. Well, well again, the big question is why is he open? And, uh, you know, they, you think you got to put somebody in his shirt at this point, get into full denial. 64 36. 25 points for Gabe DeVoe. Seven three pointers on the night. 
Brown's jumper. See you had by you know, Steve Stevenson with the rebound, and he'll get fouled by Scar. Yeah, this is, a, this is a great play. You should say everybody for Pitt had their back turned to this guy who's just torching you in the second half. Got to have an awareness of where he is at all times. His last four games now are 25 points, 17 points, 24 points, 25 points and counting. And Jared Wilson frame will come in replacing Cameron Davis. And it looks like he has gone to the Michael Phelps School of uh, Treatments. <laughs> 25 points. That ties a career high for Gabe DeVoe. Reed goes baseline. Haynes can't connect. Jonathan Milligan has checked in. Milligan able to finish along the baseline. That, that drive has been there, and uh, you know Thomas a little reluctant to pull out that time. And Milligan, the only returning backcourt player from the team last year. A turnover here. Here comes Terrell Brown. A little behind the back dribble, and Terrell Brown shows off his versatility. He was tripped by his own man, Thomas, that time, trying to play a screen role. 17 points for Terrell Brown, continuing to add to his career high. Nearly half of the points for Pitt have come from Brown. The follow is good by Elijah Thomas. Yeah, Brown going for the block that time, just took his body off, and Thomas left him all alone at the front of the rim. Brown into the corner. Stewart. Wilson frame, not on the shot clock. Shot clock down to three. Brown has it swatted. And this will be a shot clock violation. And that will lead us to a timeout. 25 point lead for the Tigers here at home, trying to make it 13 in a row here at Little John Coliseum. DeVoe had a quiet first half, but he's come alive in the second half, tied a career high with 25 points and also seven three-point field goals. Yeah, 11 of uh, 7 of 11 from three, uh, 11 of his 15 field goal attempts from behind the arc. And the thing is, he's getting great looks, being able to create them for, for himself and also off the screens. Teammates finding him where he is out on the perimeter. This has just been a very, very efficient night. He is our Hardy's star to watch, and deservedly so. We talked about this. This pit team, second in the conference in defending the three, but uh, Clemson just too much tonight. 12 of 22 on the game. Their fourth game of plus 10 made threes. Thomas. It blocked again by Terrell Brown. Terrell Brown has a 7-3 wingspan. And you can see he's tough to go against down low. He, um, you know, you look at it too, Elijah Thomas, he gets away with a little bit of a hop before he goes into his shot. Shot clock at seven. Milligan leaves it off for Brown. A good move by Milligan. And Terrell Brown now with 19 points. Yeah, Richard Sr.'s got some experience and uh, ran a nice little screen roll again. He, he had an awareness of time and clock. Notice Jared Wilson frame is not leaving DeVoe right now. In the corner, Scarra for three, short. And the rebound by Parker Stewart. Kevin Stallings yelling, go, go. Milligan, crossover. And a nice free anticipation by Scarra picking that one off. Yeah, it's one of their better perimeter defenders. Great anticipation. Devo Sweeney might be looking at that saying, uh, you want to play uh, 
the secondary for us. <laughs> ten points, ten rebounds now for Elijah Thomas, the sixth double-double of the season. And the lack of shooter, this, uh, this zone really giving Pitt a lot of problems. In the corner, Milligan for three. And the rebound for Thomas. Four and a half to go. Mitchell all the way to the hoop. 12 points for Shelton Mitchell right at his season average. And uh, Brad Brownell talked about their margin for uh, error has been razor thin without Grantham, and uh, certainly not been the case here tonight. It's a it's a dulled razor yeah. tonight. It's a butter knife. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, no. A rebound by Kenneth Luka. Wilson frame knocks down the three. Jared Wilson frame. Second three of the game for Jared Wilson frame. Marquise Reed for three. In and out. Just, you know, again, looking ahead for this team, you just you wonder where the W is out there. I mean, you know, Kevin Stallings is very confident of it. His team's going to play hard every night. Well, again, again with the finish. And now a timeout taken here by Pitt. 70 48, Clemson leading with 3.02 to go. Two-point lead for the Tigers over the Panthers here with 3.02 to go. And time to look at the upcoming schedule brought to you by North Myrtle Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau. We got uh, Florida State coming up twice. We're running uh, home and home there. And then the, the big home game against uh, Duke right after that one. Uh, Virginia Tech has been very tough at home. Uh, Georgia Tech, you got to figure, you know, they can take care of business, but uh, they're, as we've seen so far in the conference, there are no guarantees along the way. Trying to close this one out here. Make it 13 in a row at home. Of those 13 wins, eight of them in the ACC. And you have to look at it and say, you know, we wonder how long this three-point shooting is going to last, but they just keep out coming, you know, coming out game after game. Underneath, get the shot blocked as Malik Williams. Williams has checked in for the first time here for Clemson, number 20. Underneath the cut to the hoop, Milligan no, the rebound by Chukwuka. And a turnover, here comes DeVoe. DeVoe looking for a new career high, comes up short, gets the rebound, kick out for Trap. And uh, maybe time to get uh, Mr. DeVoe out of the game and risk, get, you know, can't risk that injury. The timeout is called by Brad Brownell. This is just to get the subs in, and there is DeVoe out of there. DeVoe leaves, tying a career high with 25 points, tying a career high with seven made threes. It's four straight games of at least five three-pointers. But a win here for the Clemson Tigers would extend their home winning streak to 13 and give Clemson their first 21 season since the 2013-14 season. And they would do it in their third fewest games ever. That's pretty good. Now, this is, uh, you know, this is the first time I've seen them in person. 
and uh, very impressive. Uh, you know, just the, the way, the, especially the way they really haven't missed a beat. I mean, you take that Virginia loss and put it aside. That was the first game after Grantham got hurt. Mm -hmm. But they, they can make a lot of people look that way. But ever since, uh, it's, it seems like it's, it's been seamless. Oliver comes up short. Spencer for three. In and out. And the rebound by Peace Eligoma. Both teams have emptied the benches here. Joe Anthony Starzinski is in. Milligan, the pull up. And the rebound for Anthony Oliver, the second, whose mother is the head coach of the women's basketball team here at Clemson. One Spencer for three. Kept alive. A good hustle play that time, and uh, you know this is just this is a game that um, mentally this team could have. I'm talking about Clemson could have been checked out on a little bit. You got a team that hasn't won in conference yet, but uh, really the difference was the way they came out in that second half. First four or five minutes of the second half really put the game away. I mean, we we came back from a break and it was 24 to six. That was the run really to open up the second half. And a whistle just to get Zach Smith in for Pitt. It was uh, it was it, it was basically Gabe Gabe Devoe that uh, <laughs> you know could have been one on five out there. As far as no Dante Grantham, he got injured in that Notre Dame game. They won the Notre Dame game. So if you count that without him, they're four and one without him. I don't know how many people would have thought that was going to be possible. And this would make it five and one. Yeah, and you, you look what, you know, Notre Dame finally came up with a win um, against BC after a seven game losing streak. Um, you know, they lose Bonzi Colson. And, um, you know, and plus Matt Farrell during that stretch as well. So, you know, key guys, but uh, there was arguably, we, despite, you know, we're getting what DeVoe is doing out here. Grantham their most important player and for him to go down and them to continue to have the success they had pretty remarkable Ali Goma misses both and Clemson will be able to dribble this one out 72 48 the 48 points ties the lowest point total Clemson has given up this season they did that against their in-state rival South Carolina back on December 19th It was a 10 point game at the half, but like we've seen from Pittsburgh this year, they couldn't do it for the full 40, and Gabe DeVoe exploded in the second half. Yeah, it's just those, those runs uh, are, are so tough, and when you get a team that's on such a hot streak from behind the arc, it can happen before, you know, the first TV timeout, which it basically did. So, uh, you know, we, for Pitt, you just you keep plugging away, and uh, you know they they got BC coming up. I think at home, um, which beforehand might have looked like a game that you know, but BC is uh, playing awfully well at this point. Yep, they've got Louisville coming up next, then Boston College, and at Florida State versus Wake Forest, Virginia, and at Notre Dame to close out the season. But Clemson picks up their 20th win of the season, 13th in a row here at home, while Pitt. It falls to 8 and 17, 0 and 12 in conference play. We'll come back with much, much more here from Little John Coliseum right after this. 72-48, that's the final score as Clemson defeats Pittsburgh here at home to extend their streak to 13. Let's go over to Mike Jaminski who's standing by with Brad Brownell. Thank you very much, Justin. Uh, Brad, first of all, 
Coming into this game, you got a team that hasn't won in conference. Uh, talk about the mental focus that your ball club had. You know, I thought we had really good practices this week. Uh, credit Gabe and some of our older guys. I thought they were really focused. Uh, I'm glad we had some time to get uh, prepared. I think Kevin runs a lot of really good actions. But uh, we, we had practice. I thought we were really ready to play today. What was uh, You guys have been on an incredible streak. Uh, your most important player, Dante Grantham, goes down. And um, But the three-point shooting has just been off the charts. <laughs> have you seen that coming? Well, we have confidence. Our guys can shoot the ball, and we, we knew that coming into the season. Uh, certainly Gabe's getting, uh, you know, as much opportunity as we can to get him a shot. We're going to do that. Uh, I just have a lot of confidence in our perimeter players. Marquise was battling the flu uh, here the last couple of days, so he wasn't his normal self, but Bud Shelton and Gabe really picked it up. And, um, you know, as, you see, as the regular season winds down, fighting for a lot of things, you've been ranked now for six weeks. You're also fighting for that double bye. But talk about, you know, we talked about the offense, how improved the Defensively, this ball club is. Yeah, I think we've made great strides in that area. It's something we put a lot of time in this summer and in the fall. That was our key focus. Uh, and again, it's it's really helped. I think Eli has done a really good job for us uh, in ball screen coverages. And our older players are experienced, kind of know what to what to expect game and game. Well, congratulations and uh, good one. Good luck next time out. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Justin, over to you. All right. Thanks, Mike, and thank you, Coach. Coach Brunell just picked up his 311th win all-time as a head coach. How about Gabe DeVoe here tonight? He had six points in the first half, and then all of a sudden in the second half, he erupted. Had 19 points, finished with 25 in the game, 7 of 11 from three-point land. Both of those tied career highs. It's 25 points, the seven made threes. He's now had four straight games of at least five three-pointers, and he is standing by with Mike Chaminsky. Thanks, Justin. Uh, Gabe, first of all, first half, still a game, 10 points, and then you come out and are basically playing horse from behind the three-point line. With, did you want to come out and be more determined offensively? Yeah, uh, I started off slow, missed my first couple looks. And I got a couple to go down the end of the half. In the second half, I was going to come out aggressive. Uh, we played a little slow defensively in the first half and wanted to open up the lead. Talk a little bit, one, about your feelings about your classmate, Dante Grantham, and, and his injury and, and how this team has come through it and what you guys have done to support him. Uh, I mean, we came in together, so we're pretty, we're real close, and uh, we've been roommates for three years. And uh, him going down, it hurt a lot, but uh, the team been rallying around him well. We're just coming out playing for him, just uh, trying to get, keep continuing to win. A lot of people didn't respect this team before the year started, uh, weren't picked high in the league, but here you are now ranked in the top 25 for six weeks. Do you guys talk about that as a team, or you just kind of say, let's just go out and take care of business every game? I mean, yeah, before the season, we knew uh, we didn't get much respect in the media and things like that. We just focused on uh, our inside our locker room, things like that. And I mean, the rankings, uh, we know it's been in the rankings, just try to continue to win. At this point, just trying to continue to make the NCAA tournament. Well, congratulations. You tie a career high tonight. Keep it going. Thanks for coming over. Hey. Justin, over to you. All right. Thanks again, Mike. The final stats from tonight's game. It was certainly all Pitt. Excuse me, all Clemson over Pitt. Just eight turnovers for the Tigers. They scored 22 points off the 15 turnovers for Pitt. Three-point field goals. They were 12 of 27 from three-point land. Seven of those 12 threes came courtesy of Gabe DeVoe. Elijah Thomas finished with a double-double for Clemson. Ten points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks. G-Man, they went to him early. He was a key early for Clemson. No, you know, I, I thought he got some touches, uh, really gave them a little bit of confidence. And, uh, you know, we talked early on about the fact that uh, if he gets going offensively, you know, if they can get, you know, get a double-double out of him every night, that would be terrific. But, uh, you know, really seemed to open up some things out on the perimeter. And, uh, you know, his big thing was uh, staying out of foul trouble and it was a big part of this win. Now we showed this during the game about the tournament resume for this Clemson team and they keep on winning. They're number 16 right now in the country. Their overall record is 20 and 4. They're 9 and 3 in the ACC, one of the best conferences in college basketball. RPI at 4. I mean, 
right now you're thinking about where they can be. Obviously, this is a tournament team, but how good can they be? Well, I think right now the, the, the question is what seeding do they get in the tournament? And, you know, keep playing the way they are. A, a four or even a three seed may not be out of the realm of uh, possibility with, uh, you know, depending on how they finish out this year and then their performance in the um, ACC tournament. But uh, the, the way this team looks right now, uh, that's, that, that could be a very real possibility. The remaining schedule for the 16th ranked Tigers on Valentine's Day, they go down to Tallahassee to take on the Florida State Seminoles. On February 18th, they're right back here at Little John Coliseum taking on Duke. And then they're at Virginia Tech, home versus Georgia Tech and Florida State, and they finish up the regular season at Syracuse. And again, this is all without Dante Grantham in this team with every game as we talked about in the open they're adjusting to life without him yeah and, and you, you listed some some high scoring games or teams which this team is capable of playing obviously with uh, you know with that group uh, be curious at that last one against that Syracuse zone to see how this Clemson offense uh, performs and shoots from the perimeter but um, you know you can't get caught in the trap Justin of looking at it as a whole mm -hmm. and I think what they've done is a very good job and starts with Brad Brownell and the seniors on down of just coming out and we saw the adjustment from the first half to the second half and the focus on offense and Brad Brownell mentioned this to us too the fact that he loves the fact that he's got upperclassmen as his guards they've got those three guards and that certainly helps overcoming the injury to grant them as we look around the ACC and scores from tonight Louisville one by 23 over Georgia Tech Duke leads by four 49 45 at the half over North Carolina a high scoring game there in Chapel Hill well I was you know most of the players for North Carolina have been through that rivalry and right. that game and believe me it's different than any other game and you, you can't prepare somebody for it. Oh so it. you're saying you know a little bit about it? Yeah, just a, I, I heard I heard a friend of, <laughs> friend of a friend told me um, but you know this, this freshman group of uh, Purdue going in there is their first time in this game Well this game here tonight it was a 10 point game at the half Clemson ran away with it in the second half courtesy of Gabe DeVoe who had 19 points in that second Second half. The final score 72 48. Clemson defeats Pitt. For Mike Jaminski and our entire crew, I am Justin Kutcher saying good night from Clemson, South Carolina.